Hello, my name is I'm an associate professor of otolaryngology, head and neck surgery in Massachusetts a and and Harvard Medical School. I'm going to talk today about the neural mechanisms of speech production in normal and Parkinsonian states. As we all know well, loss of dopaminergic neurons in substantia nigra is a hallmark of Parkinson's disease. It also leads to changes in voice quality in more than 90% of patients. Moreover, cognitive deficits affecting speech and language are developed uh, with a progression of disease in more than 50% of patients, and compulsive singing and humming have been described with high-dose replacement therapy. Importantly, my voice and speech symptoms do not respond well to dopaminergic treatment and often worsen after the brain stimulation of the subthalamic nucleus. This shows the range of abnormalities within voice and speech domain that result within Parkinson's disease. Studies have shown that speech symptoms worsen with the progression uh, of the um, decrease uh, serial dopamine release, as you can see on this uh, graph of negative correlations uh, between dopamine transporter binding and the UPDRS motor subscore for speech. It is obvious that the altered uh, dopamine release plays a role in a more severe manifestation of PD speech symptoms. But do we understand how? For that, let's examine the organization of brain networks responsible for normal speech production. As you see on this slide, speech production requires a complex orchestration between different components that control uh, various aspects of speaking, including articulation, phonological processing, lexical interface, and so on. It turns out that the speech networks, um, as any other complex networks, have embedded uh, regions of uh, high uh, importance within the network. Among these are so-called network hubs, which exert the most significant influence on the whole network activity. We distinguish connector hubs uh, that connect two or more distinct neural populations or communities and provincial hubs uh, that provide a foundation for the growth of their own respective communities. Let's examine the distribution of network hubs and their influence on the formation of speech networks on the example of a contrast between a resting condition and sentence production. Here you see brain regions that are connector hubs in both resting and speaking networks. It turns out that the same brain, uh, that these same brain regions reorganize their connectivity depending on the task production. As you can see here, the same regions establish a very different pattern of connectivity during resting compared to speaking, but the latter exclusively involving parietal, cingulate, striatal, thalamic, and cerebellar regions. This unique organization of the speech production network is preserved even if more closely related behavior is examined, such as syllable production. Here again, you see shared hubs between syllable and speech production networks, uh, which established very distinct connectivity with the rest of regions within the network, more widely involving frontal, striatal, and thalamic regions during sentence production compared to syllable production. In the context of Parkinson's disease, it is important to understand uh, that the dopaminergic modulation of speech uh, networks, in addition to the topological organization of these large scale networks, especially relevant to dopamine release to the stratum and speech motor cortex. Previous PET neuroreceptor mapping studies have shown that modulation of dopamine release in the left caudate nucleus, specific to phonological anomalies compared to baseline, suggesting that the left caudate nucleus um, controls the level of phonological accuracy. On the other hand, modulation of dopamine release in the left putamen was shown to be specific to phonological anomalies compared to uh, syntactic anomalies, suggesting that left putamen is involved in the speed of phonological processing. Another study demonstrated larger involvement of the limbic stratum in verbal episodic memory and greater involvement of the associative and sensory motor stratum in category fluency, establishing again distinct patterns of correlations between tracer binding and cognitive performance. During speech production, we showed that speech-induced dopamine is uh, predominantly released in the left stratum 
uh, despite the fact that, uh, that a bilateral stratum is being activated during speaking. We also showed a coupling between dopamine release and brain activation in the anterior dorsal putamen. It turns out that dopamine release during speech production is also somatotopically organized in the ventral part of the dorsal stratum, which is a region that contains descending fibers from laryngeal and orofacial motor cortex. On the top row, you see the distribution of D1 and D2 receptor binding during speech production, sentence production, as well as their overlap. As a comparison, on the bottom row, you see the drawings of axonal terminals in the ventral region of the dorsal stratum following injection of an anterograde tracer into the myelolaryngeal motor cortex. As it is not always possible uh, to easily conduct experimental studies in human subjects due to ethics or unavailability of appropriate methodologies, in some cases, uh, neural simulations of specific brain processes have been helpful in getting insights into uh, specific components of speech production network, both, both in healthy and disease populations. Here we modeled um, whole brain activity during speech production and incorporated dopamine release to examine how cortical activity may change uh, due to dopaminergic modulation. We found that uh, stepwise decreases in dopamine release are highly correlated with cortical activity um, in the speech motor cortex and lead to dopamine dependent decreases in activity. It is plausible that this ultimately leads to and translates to the disorganization of the entire network and is reflected in progressive worsening of speech symptoms in patients with in summary, there are complex mechanisms of speech production that require behavior-specific reorganization of large-scale brain networks with the involvement of specialized regions of sensory motor information transfer. There is a topogra uh, topographic release of uh, dopamine within the stratum, which is responsible for modulation of different aspects of speech control, including uh, production, uh, syntactic ph phonological error monitoring, verbal, episodic memory, and category fluency. Loss of nigral uh, dopamine uh, release, such as NPD, directly impacts the cortical activity during speech production. Uh, we hope that future research would shed more light into the specific mechanism of how the um, cortical and subcortical regions are interacting in terms of um, their correlations with, uh, between uh, abnormal activity and a loss of dopaminergic um, uh, function. And that may lead to specific understanding of dopaminergic mechanisms uh, in Parkinson's disease that are involved in speech um, impairments. Understanding of these abnormalities you know, would lead us to uh, new uh, therapies uh, or new uh, target, uh, targets for the brain stimulation that may be beneficial not only for motor symptoms, but also for improvement of voice and speech in this uh, disease. I'd like to thank um, my collaborators, my lab, and the funding, and thank you for your attention.